part of most service delivery companies are project management. Um, in most cases, project management software, which are often client um, on the PC or device of the project manager is used, but the Orex uh, service delivery infrastructure provides a projects management module that allows for collaborative projects, communication and visibility in the company as well as with the customer. So in most cases you could have internal projects but in many cases projects would involve a customer and so projects in the Orex SDI um, system allows a customer to receive uh, more visibility without uh, seeing too much and it allows a two-way communication between the customer and the project manager in order to improve the effectiveness and the value of managing projects on the system. It is, um, it is true that most project managers prefer to keep their projects private where they can better control and manage them and therefore making it visible in this uh, enterprise system is not ideal to everybody but in terms of the company uh, risk and um, value it's definitely the best way to have a project that is visible and can be managed from different levels. So let's have a quick look at the projects management module. It is available from the menu by clicking the projects menu and you can also create a new project by clicking the plus it will expand. You in fact have three options. You can create a new project create a, just a basic service desk task or log billing time. So in the projects module we have tabs on top which organizes and gives us access to the various areas. First tab is the active projects. There will be a list of all active projects um, on this tab including the progress um, of this specific project, the risk, the start and end date, who's the project manager and who's the customer. There's also an active projects timeline that is basically an overview of all active projects and also an overview of all current tasks uh, for all active projects. You can create new projects using that option. A project is very simple um, you just give it a name, project manager, project sponsor if required, link it to a customer and a contact if needed and you can use internal and customer references uh, as needed. The status by default is planned. If you want to start on the project you need to make it active and you'll have a start date and say whether this is a fixed cost uh, project. If not, it will be time and material based. And then you can add any external attachments if needed. Once you've created this project, um, you, you once again have a bunch of tabs for this specific project. So the first project, uh, the first tab is the overview of the project. It gives you an idea of uh, you know when, where and how. Um, the current status, the progress and you can click on this little icon to send an instant update of the current status to all involved parties and they are subscribed under the comments tab as subscribers. So you can subscribe customers and internal people. The system will know when somebody is a registered user and respect those access privileges and if it's a customer show them just the customer side of the project. Okay so um, the start and end date of this project is, uh, is um, updated automatically based on your project um, plan which is created down here. Now on top of the project plan you have an activate and baseline. So if you, uh, you can basically create a project plan and then activate it and baseline it at the same time. You can also hide, toggle your Gantt chart on or off 
um, you can print a list of tasks that's to present it at the meeting in a report format and then you can import tasks from um, an external project management uh, system you can also export your tasks if you need it to import it in an external system and then there are version options uh, for your project plan at the bottom uh, you can uh, a project can be rated but all um, records in ORAX can be rated <coughs> you also have a billing status um, and then the billing side will be catered for so in order to create a project plan we will start by clicking this plus to ask, add a task I, before we do that I just want to quickly run through the tabs at the top uh, project level comments can be added in here so that is basically a discussion around this project which can be internal or internal and external based on the subscribers you can attach documents to the specific project you can also assess the current resource allocation so this is kind of a, a more of a billing and um, and resource management level uh, view of your current resources you can um, assign service desk tasks to a project so technically a project can be uh, open-ended in the sense that extra service calls and tasks can be logged in the service desk and then linked to this project which will bring those costs and that activity into this project available for billing or reporting on the billing tab you got the options to ensure that you do not forget to bill certain items uh, and it gives you a financial overview of your project and then you can email the project uh, manually to somebody internal or external you can update the metadata of this project and view any logs as in emails or changes to the project okay so the project plan is built by adding this plus by using this plus or importing tasks let's start by creating a task so we'll say the first task is to create a template we can add instructions in here with a checklist so if there are sub items that are important to this specific task uh, we can add them there and we can also add attachments we create a, st a start date for the specific task now remember this is a subtask in our project timeline and technically this task can be dynamic if we set predecessors for this task so our first task will set with a specific start date uh, we'll, we'll set a duration so uh, in the ORAX projects a task cannot be less than one day uh, it is in order to prevent a uh, specific um, you know high detail uh, management that just complicates the project plan now if you do have five smaller items that needs to be done in a day it's a suggestion that you use checklist items and and not create separate tasks uh, for those smaller items but even if it's a short um, duration task we will still be recording it as a one day task if the specific task is a milestone we can check it here and it will be uh, entered or recorded in the um, the project plan as a milestone uh, by default all new tasks will have the plan status that means they're not active yet we are just busy populating our project plan and we can activate those afterwards in one click um, the parent of this specific task will be uh, by default the project task uh, so the project group in fact so you'll see that the parent is sample project which is basically our project so that's the container for all tasks within this this project but we can build a hierarchy of tasks and so the parent will always be the 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 task or group that this specific subtask belongs to then we can set a predecessor which will be a task and we can also say 
to uh, either ignore a predecessor or end when the predecessor ends, start when the predecessor starts, end when the predecessor starts, or start when the predecessor starts. So by default we'll say end when the predecessor ends. In this case, since this is my first and master task, I'm not going to set a predecessor there. I can also sp specify lag day. So let's assume I do say start when the predecessor ends. I can say just wait two days, give us two days space between those, the end and the start date. And then at this stage I can add a resource or I can add that resource at a later stage. Okay, and I can add billing hours. That is basically my planned hours for this task. If I save this, we'll see there's a new task in the project timeline. It is um, grouped under the sample project, which is the container group for this project plan. And I have a start and an end date. Uh, it's one day. I can see a cost which is a dollar icon uh, related to this task and also a resource so the resource is already allocated I can see it's John Smith and one hour there is no cost uh, linked I can load those separately once I've linked the cost I can then start tracking um, planned cost versus actual costs and the same with this this would be one hour is my planned time and I can link it to the actual time uh, for this uh, project in order to to have a, a, a proper versioning and also budgeting um, and, and variances for this project. If I do create a new um, task it will just append it to the bottom of this one so let's say this is my next task I'm just going to say it starts when create template ends. Okay, it'll be one day duration, no lag days, and I'm going to save this as such. So there's my new task. And there is my third task. I just added a, a description and hit enter and it puts it in there. So I have several options at this stage. Uh, for instance, you can see that the bold R, which stands for resource under the first task, indicates that I do have an, a, a resource allocated. Now I can allocate more than one resource. These do not have, and I can allocate them afterwards like this. It also shows me I've not got no cost uh, linked to these it shows me that they are they have predecessors set so they start this is another indication this one starts when this one ends and this one starts when that one ends and so you'll see in your timeline there's a dark um, column where Saturday and Sunday is because the project module does not it only caters for a five day work week so in this case this is a one day task but you will see it spans quite a few days. Now I can tell you why this is because in our uh, current calendar there is also a all these red items there is a holiday on that day and on that day so in fact the system already knows we have a holiday on the Friday and there's a holiday on the Monday so it stretches this task across those holidays and ensures that the consultant or the project still reserves one working day which is the Tuesday for the specific task so those are the things that the project plan automatically takes care of because the system is calendar aware it knows w which days are holidays and off days and and such and um, that is a, a benefit that you have in the system um, and so a few things that we need to just look at a specific task as an E uh, next to it and if you expand that it allows you to create for instance first of all a sub uh, a task this one says new task on this level so it'll add a new task just below this one so therefore in between these two it allows you to indent this task so if you wanted to uh, make this task a sub task of this one which will automatically change this task into a group 
you can do that and this is how you build hierarchies you can also rearrange tasks by using the up and down arrow or simply by dragging and dropping to sort your tasks on the timeline so often a case uh, in, in most cases it would be a good idea to say um, let's create groups first so I would say this is the planning stage I'll create that I'll create an stage I'll do a testing stage and finally maybe a stabilization stage okay so what I did in this case I created four stages they aren't actually tasks they are groups they don't know it yet but what I'll do now is below this one I will create new tasks so I can for instance do this add a task say imp let's say start negotiation I'll put it in there just like this it's going to put it in there but then I will expand it now this I could have set on the actual task but it's easier for me in this case just to press the indent button and now we'll see the planning stage changed to a group and the start negotiation task is now a subtask of this group so the reason we want to do this is because if we have a extensive uh, project plan we can collapse groups to remove the detail and focus on one group at a time if needed the other reason is that a group we don't need to manage the start and end dates the period of a group it will automatically inherit it from the child tasks so as we set these up they will tell the group they will basically dictate the group span the groups period and so in this way you can now uh, basically build up your project plan I can even drag this task in here or oh, actually I should have uh, dragged it in there and it will become a part of this specific group so in this way you can start by building a project plan by first uh, quickly capturing your stages or your big um, items and then start adding tasks below them and uh, you may even want to just create a bunch of tasks in sequence and then drag and drop them as needed to build your effective structure and then as you continue you can then drag and drop these or just tweak them so at this stage I may want to say this one says start when check Im when implementation template finishes so it's this one so I may want to adjust that there, there may be new uh, conditions and then once I've got my basic uh, project plan I can now go and assign resources so resources are in addition that is what basically gives me um, more uh, that almost allocates time which I can compare to an actual and it also gives me the ability to actually push this task to somebody's home page uh, so that they can act, um, act on it and complete it so uh, I've added another resource to this task and so at this stage if we click the resources tab you'll see there's more information here we already have uh, information we can see that the the current HR record for John Smith doesn't have billing rates so we need to go fix that or edit and put some custom billing rates just for this project we can see what was planned what is actual and um, what we have built and so we have a lot of uh, options once we start building and maturing our uh, project plan in order to to use for resource planning and also for billing so at this stage if we are happy with our um, project plan we want to activate and baseline it that basically 
creates a little baseline which we can see here for each item in this project plan and as the project plan um, changes uh, we will start to see the variances in our initial plan and our um, actual uh, project plan so we can hide if also if we want to work faster uh, we can hide the Gantt chart and that will only show us the task detail okay so once our uh, project plan is active uh, we can update these tasks as things progress so for instance we can click on this um, task to open it and uh, select its uh, progress so we can say this is 80 percent done it's still active uh, but we can then save it okay that instantly ma marks it as 80 percent uh, complete and we can uh, fr in this way um, you know address every single task for instance let's look at this task we can if we scroll down even more um, we can see uh, that there are options down here that says complete and if we look at those they say complete on the plan date or on a specific date or today's date if I say on a plan date it's just going to mean that task is now completed it'll show it as completed and that is uh, striked off our project plan once we start getting completed tasks in our project plan it will also give us a bit of a dashboard on top to help us track the actual um, progress of this project.